Hey guys, so I'm hoping the camera looks good. I'm actually going back to using this camera that I used to use that I didn't really like at first, but I kind of like it now for some reason. It just works now. I don't, I don't really know what happened. Anyway, so I'm actually doing a video about the fall of Anastasia Beverly Hills and I truly, truly, truly believe in this video. I think it needed to be made because I feel like there is this <sighs> looming comeback of Anastasia Beverly Hills. There is such an echo it's because I just moved into a new place and the other room is completely empty. So I'm going to close the door actually. I feel there is a slow comeback for Anastasia Beverly Hills. I keep on looking into the viewfinder. I'm so not used to the viewfinder. Anyway, look in your eyes. Let's make eye contact. Um, I feel like there's this looming comeback of Anastasia Beverly Hills. I'm not very excited about it. If you had asked me maybe a year ago if I was excited about, you know, the ABH comeback, like make old products new and wonderful and I would have been so excited. I would have been like literally jumping with joy because the way that Anastasia Beverly Hills was going was just not very exciting to me personally. I tried a few of the newer products and I just didn't really like them. And I was just so excited about this comeback. And now I am not. So I'm gonna go through literally from the inception of Anastasia Beverly Hills till now and now is me refusing to buy any ABH products ever again. Um, until maybe the management changes as in like <laughs> Anastasia leaves her own brand. Until then I am refusing. I really don't know what would have to happen for me to come back other than literally her just <laughs> not being part of the brand. You will still see me mentioning products um, in videos but when I do I will give a big you know disclaimer just saying like hey I don't really support this brand anymore and I don't buy new products but for example I'm just using a new product in the project pan and every time I mention it I'm gonna have to be like I I will not repurchase this and I also don't recommend you guys buy it. Anastasia Beverly Hills was started by Romanian born Anastasia Saw. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce her surname in 1997. It's actually a very long running brand and you guessed it was started in Beverly Hills hence why the name Anastasia Beverly Hills. So it first didn't really start as like a makeup brand. It started as a salon for brows and it was purely just brows. Back in the day like this is late 90s early 2000s brows are not very important. They were thin plucked to hell and just not very that important. Not very that important. That was a great sentence for me. They weren't that important. So I guess she was like the first woman to bring not first. I'm I'm not, you know, brows were important. Mm. She was someone that popularized taking care of your eyebrows and making them look shapely and nice. So she started her flagship salon and only did brow shaping. Um, so she's actually best known for her brow products. To this day, when you think ABH, I think they've kind of swayed away from that. Like I feel like now when I think of ABH, I think of the eyeshadow palettes. But if you had asked me five years ago, I would have said ABH brows, brow wiz, brow pomade. I think someone that's continued, someone, a brand that's continued to, for me, be, con that constantly related to brows is Benefit. I feel like they just haven't really moved away from that. Yeah, they create other products, but I think the other products are quite average. So to me, Benefit is brows. Whereas ABH has kind of moved away from that, but that was their start. It was a brow salon with um, just brow styling products and that was it. She actually created what's known as the golden ratio for eyebrows. The one that like everyone on Instagram used in 2015. We were supposed to do like inner nose and then arch on the pupils and then out like this. And then, you know, the whole, so she actually created that and to this day she still has them, but she had these like stencils that had the perfect brow ratio, the golden brow ratio, and you could use that to basically create that ratio on your face. So she has a daughter called Claudia, who's also known as Norvina on the internet, and that's basically what she goes by. So I'm just gonna refer to her as Norvina from this point onwards, but she is Anastasia's daughter, and she's also the president of the company. They are like the original Instagram brand, in my opinion. Like I think when I think of the boom of 2015 makeup, I think of Anastasia Beverly Hills, really. Like really and truly when I think about it, I think they were dominating the sphere. I think when modern renaissance came in, it was truly a renaissance, for the beauty community on the internet. Like, I think when we say Renaissance, we mean that. They came in with a eyeshadow palette and they said, we're gonna give you warm tones and you're gonna love them. And everyone did. It, it was mind blowing. Like everyone loved it. Yeah, I just think when I think Instagram brand, I think of them and I think that was their peak. Like, I don't think they have reached that since. It's only really been a downfall spiral since then. So they had, you know, the pomade brows, the beaming highlight, the eyeshadow palettes, aka Modern Renaissance, Soft Glam was my personal favorite. So in 2012, they actually started sending PR with a good camera. So they sent PR makeup, but they also sent a camera along with it so people could take pictures of their makeup and post it on Instagram. Yes, yeah, so they actually started this trend of taking pictures of your makeup and like putting it on Instagram and like they really facilitated that for people. They said, here's a camera, use it and show our makeup off. Um, and everyone did because you're like, oh my God, I just got this really good camera and some really good makeup. What am I gonna do? Put my makeup on, 
take a picture and post it on Instagram with a little at Anastasia Beverly Hills. So they are really just the original blueprint for Instagram brands. And this was actually a suggestion made by Norvina. So she was very in tune and very tapped into the internet sphere before many other brands tapped in. So she, because she was kind of like young, she was using Instagram just for fun, I'm assuming, because she's much younger than Anastasia. I'm assuming she noticed how much of a market there is on Instagram and she said, hey, like, let's do this. Let's post on Instagram. It would be years after that, that other brands would start having marketing teams be like, hey, let's send PR, let's go on Instagram, let's go on YouTube. Like it took ages for other brands to catch up. So in 2014, they actually started a single shadow line. So they had these single shadow pots, which were very popular back in the day. And that was also kind of with Makeup Geek and a few other brands, they all released single eyeshadows and you could buy a magnetic palette and put your shadows in and create your perfect eyeshadow palette. Colourpop still does it, Inglot still does it. Brands were selling you the fantasy that you could create your own like curated colour story that they couldn't create for you. So you had to do it yourself. It was always very expensive because single shadows always went for more money and then you had to buy the magnetic palette. So it always ended up being really expensive. Oh, how could I forget Mac? Mac and Single Shadows was iconic on the internet. I think Mac Single Shadows um, with a clear front with just the Mac, um, those were just dominating YouTube in like 2014-ish. So then in 2015, they released a contour palette, which was amazing because contouring was just dominating makeup. It was around the time when like Kim K started doing her like, this is how I contour and like basically telling all of us that the way she gets the face that she gets is through contouring and not by filler or Botox, which I'm recently, Kim Kardashian was in the Allure magazine and she said that she's never had filler or that she doesn't have filler, which I think is, I'm not gonna comment on it. But anyway, a lot of celebrities were saying that the way they get the look they get is through contour and everyone and their mum was contouring. It was just like a thing that we were all doing. I was doing it and like I just was not good at it either. Um, so this was around the time of like the Kat Von D shade and light palette and like Kim K started teaching us about contour and then she released her own contour products. So it was the perfect time. Like I feel like Anastasia has really been on this until recently. Around the time of like the inception of the brand, Anastasia was really ahead of trends. And what I mean by that is she was truly creating the trends. She wasn't just following them. She wasn't a year late. She was the one creating trends. She said, we're gonna be contouring right now. And we were all contouring. She said, we're gonna do a warm eyeshadow palette. And from that point onwards for like five years, we were all exclusively using warm eyeshadows. Anything cool toned was completely out. Around the same time in 2015, she actually released liquid lipsticks, which was really just setting a trend for people like Kylie Jenner to come in and create lip kits. And then for every brand to ever exist to create their own liquid lipsticks. I've actually tried on Sassy Beverly Hills liquid lipsticks and they're awful. Hot garbage. I don't really like them very much. They're so dry and they're so, so thick that you can't even attempt to apply it thinly. Like I think even Neither of them are my favorite product, but if I had to say, like I'd say Kylie actually created a much better lip kit because it was so much thinner that you could like spread it out and like tap it out and not have it be so drying. But anyway, liquid lipsticks are not my favorite product, but I lived for liquid lipsticks back in the day. So I just wore them and they sucked the moisture of my lips, but I was okay with it. So they really were just setting trend after trend after trend. We were doing brows, brows became popular. We were doing um, contour. No, we were doing single shadows, everyone was doing single shadows. Contour, everyone was contouring. And then liquid lipsticks, everyone was wearing liquid lipstick. No gloss, just liner, overline your lips, liquid lipstick. Then in 2016, we had really just like a renaissance on the, like from I think 2015, it was starting to build and people were like, oh, makeup's really fun. Let me buy a lot of makeup. I think 2016 was truly like the renaissance for the beauty community. It was crazy. Um, and that was when they released the modern renaissance palette, which I believe changed the way that we look at eyeshadows forever. Like it was just like, it was the thing that made eyeshadow important. It wasn't just you buy a quad and you just slap it on your eyes however you want with like those spongy tip brushes and your fingers. No, no, no. You were buying full on makeup brush kits. You were looking up tutorials. You were doing a cut crease. You were using concealer. You were putting on glitter glue and you were putting on glitter and you were putting on liner and false lashes and you were really making it a thing. And they really started that. I believe that they were like the ones that were like, no, eyeshadow is important do it. And then in 2017, they released Subculture and that was truly a moment um, for the internet. Not in a good way. Obviously everyone was thinking, oh, this is gonna be just like modern renaissance, but it really wasn't. Um, the, the pigmentation levels and the texture of the eyeshadows was so different. Modern renaissance was already a very soft eyeshadow with very pigmented pigments that people were really like discovering a new way of doing eyeshadow. And then Subculture comes along and it's like 
10 times more pigmented and 10 times more soft and people are hitting pan just by like sitting there and tapping their brush for a few minutes you know like it was insane and all these videos were getting millions and millions of views and people were, people's channels were growing exponentially at this point like people were gaining hundreds of thousands of subscribers purely for just talking about the subculture palette it was a moment for the beauty community but it was also the beginning of i believe the toxicity of the beauty community of noticing that negative videos get you more views than positive videos because i think I, until this point it was here's my mac lipstick collection and here's my favorites of may 2014 and i'm not mocking this, these videos i love these videos but it was very like here's my makeup collection and this is how i organize my makeup and then when subculture hit i noticed like the interest for negativity rose. And I don't think this is a bad thing. Like I'm not painting this to be a bad or a good thing. I think it's just like a neutral thing. It was just a change in people and the community. And people were drawn to more negative reviews. People wanted to see makeup products fail. And I think at that point, everyone kind of realized that that was what was going on and people were filming more and more fails. And instead of just doing favorites videos, it was here's my faves and fails. Here's like a failed product. Here's like, you know, just, People were really interested in watching makeup products fail and I think this was really the start of it. Then in 2018, they were allegedly worth $3 billion. I think that is crazy. I think it's, but it's also like so obvious. Like, of course, they were on such a high trajectory. In 2018, they also released Soft Glam, which was my first Anastasia Beverly Hills, Beverly Hills palette. And it was also the first high-end eyeshadow palette that I bought for myself with my own money. And it was like the first time when I was like really wearing makeup. Like, I was wearing makeup before this point, don't get me wrong, this was in 2018, I was 18 years old at that point, but from probably about 14, 15, I was wearing just like makeup, but like I started wearing makeup when I was 18, like I really went for it, you know, <laughs> for good and bad outcomes. Sometimes my makeup looked a bit off, I think now I've come to a point where like I really like my makeup, but maybe in like five years time I'll look back on it and be like, what was going on, you know? They also released Norvina, but the suede Norvina, and I have it and I love it. Well, I hate saying that I love any of these products now because there is that connotation I'm gonna get to in a minute, but it truly is one of my favorite of those palettes. I've hit pan on like one or two shades. I really love it. Um, in 2018, they started The List, which was actually Norvina's idea for PR. She didn't want just people of high sub counts and high follower counts. She wanted people that were talented, people that were passionate about the brand. She just didn't care about well, she claimed she didn't care about the sub counts. She just wanted to see talent. And so the list, in actually October 2019, I saw some of the tweets, kind of, I looked back through Twitter and I saw some of the tweets. They were kind of around the time of like October 2019. They did the hashtag ABHPR search, which caused mayhem on the internet. You could not go on Twitter and not have your timeline flooded with anyone that you follow doing the hashtag ABHPR search, but also retweeting other people's hashtag ABHPR search. Like it was absolute mayhem on the internet. A bunch of people got added to the ABHPR list and then promptly taken off a few months later. There are actually a bunch of videos talking about how they were just like taken off the ABHPR list literally like two months after they were put on because it's all good and well to say that you don't care about the numbers and you care about talent. But if that talent is not bringing in sales, then it feels like really um, a waste of money to send them free products, right? That was like the, the mindset, I believe. Uh, in 2018, 2019, they actually ended up getting a really big investment from a different brand and then started dropping products like crazy. Like it was left, right and center. You went on trend mood, everyone was talking about it. They were just like, why is ABH releasing so much stuff? Because if you noticed before this, right, I'm gonna give you a little, in 2014, we had single shadows, 2015 contour palette, 2016 modern renaissance, 2017 subculture. Like it was basically one release a year which now to think about that is crazy. Like brands don't do that nowadays, but it was crazy. Um, then in 2018, we had two launches, Soft Glam and Norvina. And then it seems like after they got this investment, the brand investing was definitely pushing for more profits. Um, and therefore they were like release more. So in 2018, 19, we had Riviera, three collabs, the Norvina palette, foundation, brow product, body oil, quads, pigments, eyeliner. Um, this was very different from the usual release pattern, which was literally like one release a year. Then we actually ended up getting rumors of a hostile work environment, mainly by Norvina, who apparently was like judging people by like their astrology signs and like, we don't employ these people. And also if she was mean to someone, it'd be like, oh, it's the Mercury in retrograde. And apparently she was just very mean and creating a very mean and toxic work environment, but that's never really been confirmed. It was just something that was floating around, but that's really all I could find. <sighs> Let's talk about kind of, ABH is very strong suit for a while, and it was collabs. In 2016, they did a master eyeshadow palette with Mario. 
in 2017 they did a glow kit with Nicole Guerrero of six highlights and that really started like the beaming highlight trend. In 2018 they had a very iconic launch and it was Amrezi's um, highlighter that is one of the most wanted highlights of all time. It was limited edition so you can't get it anymore and if you got it you're cherishing it because you literally cannot buy it and I know people that have hit pan and they're so upset about it or they would like drop it and crack it and like literally cry because you can't get it and they literally said they would never restock it. It was one of those products where like they said limited edition and they meant it for the worst because people were just like bring it back please. Um, since then I actually tried to release something similar with this one but people gave it very lukewarm reviews. I don't mind it. I think it's an interesting shade and interesting formula but I don't think it is the same formula as the Amrezi one. In 2019, they actually ended up doing three collabs, which was a lot. They did the Jackie Aina palette, the Carly Bible palette, and then an Alyssa Edwards palette. And people thought that they were too close together and none of them were like given the spotlight and almost felt like they were just like forcing collabs out there just to make money. And then in 2020, they had an Amrezi palette, uh, but it had two extra shades on the side and it wasn't suede, it was glittery. But the glitter wasn't really the issue because at that point they had stopped doing the suede palettes as much. But it's just because they added the two extra shades, it was much, it was longer than the other palettes. So if you had like a very satisfying collection of ABH palettes, which ABH also did another thing really well. They started the collector's mindset because all the palettes were the same shape and size. It forced you to almost feel like you had to complete the collection. But obviously with the Amrezi launch, it was bigger and therefore it broke the pattern. I feel like at that point, they kind of lost the collector's mindset that people had. Let's talk about Norvina for a minute. So she actually had one eyeshadow palette, which was the suede one. And then she took over more publicly. Um, Anastasia really went to kind of the sidelines. She was kind of taking her time to just live life um, after being a CEO for so many years. Um, she took over more publicly. She was doing a lot more public tweeting, Instagram posting, talking about the brand. She was also taking over in like the creative direction and like what the brand should be doing. and. She released five volumes of eyeshadow palettes. I actually tried one of them and I really, really, really disliked it, really. And I have, just haven't bought another one since. Um, multiple nine pans of the same formula and they all had very lukewarm and pretty inconsistent reviews. Like, I remember my review was very bad for the pink one that I had. And then other people said the, this other eye, like, shade selection is much better. And then I'd watch YouTube videos and people would be like, well, this one's good, but this one isn't. And this one is, and this one isn't. So it was very inconsistent just across the board. So this wasn't really a good look. And I think this was really the start of the downfall of Anastasia Beverly Hills. It was with the Amrezi palette, it was breaking the collector's mindset. And then Norvina coming in and releasing literally palette after palette. I believe the difference between um, Norvina volume one and two was literally like a month. And people didn't know that the second one was coming out. So they all bought the first one. And then the second one literally came out a month later. So they weren't even given the choice to like decide which one they wanted. And then she literally dropped three more within like a year. People were just getting fed up. I remember um, Anastasia Beverly Hills was featured in so many anti hauls, just people saying, we do not want all of this makeup. We don't want it. We don't need it. Why is this all being released? So people really stopped paying attention to Anastasia Beverly Hills, stopped paying attention to the launches stopped buying it as well. Like I think it was just like an overall trend of just like a huge downfall. And I haven't seen a brand fall off quite this hard in a while. It was shocking. It was, yeah, it was just a shock to me. Like I just didn't, I couldn't fathom the fact that a brand so big and so popular and the one that like popularized every trend we have could fall down this hard. And people were blaming Norvina pretty hard. Like I think people wanted Anastasia to come back and like rein things in and figure things out, you know? But then, but then I found out <laughs> that um, Anastasia Beverly Hills well, Mrs. Anastasia, during the war on Ukraine, which I'm not gonna get into the politics of it all, whatever you think you think. I just think obviously Putin is not in the right for attacking innocent people for whatever gain he wanted. Um, so Russia invades Ukraine. And why am I talking about this when someone has a body heal? So people died, houses were missing, people had to run away. The economy is affected to this day. Inflation, all of the good stuff, you know, we love it. Anastasia isn't from Russia, I actually, emphasize this when I first started talking about her. She's actually Romanian born. She seems to be a fan of Putin, who is an evil man, obviously. He's a dictator. Russia has very strict laws. People get thrown in jail for literally no reason, beaten up, tortured, etc. Like, I, I don't want to talk further about this, but Putin is not a great man. And I think we can all agree on this. Um, and she actually ended up posting, she's got like her private page, just like Anastasia saw, and then she's got like the Anastasia Beverly Hills page on her personal page on her stories she started posting memes of Putin and liking posts about him and like supporting him mid him attacking Ukraine it wasn't even like now she's doing it which wouldn't be any better but it was literally as he was attacking Ukraine and people were dying and losing their homes and losing everything 
she was posting memes about Putin and this is when I really checked out. I think the brand was already on such a downfall that like now this was just like the nail in the coffin for me. Like I'm just like, okay, we're done. Yeah, I literally just wrote this in my script and I just said it off the cuff, but I had it in my script. This is where I check out of the brand and never support them again. I think this should be a Kat Von D slash Lime Crime moment where we don't support them until the person doesn't benefit from the brand anymore. Kat Von D, the brand, was on such a decline that Kat Von D herself had to leave and they had to rebrand the brand into KVD. I think Anastasia Beverly Hills needs to stop being Anastasia Beverly Hills and should just be Beverly Hills. Same with Lime Crime. Lime Crime was on a downfall trajectory until the CEO left. And even now it hasn't picked back up. Like KVD has just managed to pick back up because of TikTok trends and that's really it. They literally just launched the Nouveau palette, which is supposed to look like the original palettes, but it's a bit bigger a bit thinner, like it's bigger, but it's thinner and it doesn't have the suede packaging, it's more canvas and the pans are bigger. It's like supposed to be like the old palettes, but refined and like more modern and like just refined, but I just can't get myself to buy it. I was so tempted to get it. And then I remembered suddenly one day that like she did this and I just can't support the brand or Anastasia herself. So that is my Anastasia Beverly Hills video that I promised you guys like last week. Here it is. If you want more from me, subscribe to the bell, like comment for engagement. Let me know what you guys think and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.